it is such an honor for me to close this day about rethinking about the principles of good design by Dieter Rams. It is a great honor to introduce Anne Lacaton from the studio Lacaton and Basal. And I will be very brief because she doesn't need any introduction actually. Anne Lacaton since 1987 had the Lacaton and Vassal architecture practice jointly with Jean-Philippe Vassal with whom in 2008 she won the Grand National Architecture Prize. Her work is a referent uh, in the manner of which she does architecture in a, an ethical and economic way. And as she was saying, she was telling me, she focuses on housing by her personal decision. They also prioritize the needs of people who live in a house and they give value to pre-existing structures in front of other decisions where aesthetics or a spectacular result is prioritized. They prefer rehabilitation instead of demolition as an efficient strategy. Back in 2004, she received, together with Philippe Vassal, the Shock Award for Visual Arts presented by the Royal Swedish Academy of Arts. And in 2018, the Lacaton and Vassal studio was one of the five recognized with the Sustainable uh, Prize. And in 2018, they also won the Mies van der Rohe Prize for Architecture. I would like to welcome Anne Lacatan. And thank you. Thank you very much for your invitation. I'm, I'm sorry I'm speaking in English because I'm not very familiar to speak well uh, Spanish. Um, an important um, issue today for architecture, which is also, um, and urban planning, which is also for us a principle, is to make do. The concept is not so easy to translate. In French, we have this expression, faire avec, uh, which means, literally translated, doing with, making with. So it means that uh, we think that we have a lot already built, a lot of construction, buildings, roads, networks, infrastructures. Make do is about doing the better use of uh, what we already have, Make do is about considering the existing as a resource and a value and not always seeing it as definitely unsatisfactory and always too constraining. That is to say, in, uh, most of the time, um, that finding uh, the existing as uh, always unsatisfactory means that it's uh, the, um, the good reason to tear down and to replace. We think that every existing situation is uh, an opportunity made of multiple elements, qualities, capacities that can be integrated, reactivated, reused. It offers uh, already enough material so that it allows to reduce drastically the need of new materials or the need of new territories to build. Every constraint and restriction can be positively turned around. Every place permits invention and imagination. We can do a lot and we can do well with what we already have. We can invent with what we already have. This requires a new approach, accurately observing from inside as close as possible. This means understanding paying attention to the existing with a positive approach to reveal the values and to exalt the qualities and to ask what can we do with it. Today, existing situations are the new materials for the project and to make the city, adding, joining, expanding, spanning the existing structure, superimposing structures, spaces and uses, it's always, is always more promising and more interesting than always start over and start from a place before and cleaned and emptied. 
So for us, the existing is uh, the basis and the first materials for a lot of our projects. And I will uh, present uh, some projects through this angle of uh, making uh, do. Making do with uh, the existing, with people, nature, climate, with economy, with uh, intelligence, to invent or to reinvent with what we already have in hands, to do more with less. Make do with uh, nature, with trees, soils, flowers, animals, with everything already there. It's what uh, we did with uh, this uh, project for a house on a wonderful place on uh, the seaside. Um, and we, um, we were asked to build a house, a holiday house on this uh, sand dune here. Um, and uh, we were first impressed by the quality of the site, by uh, all this forest, which was very dense, by the sand on the floor. And immediately we thought that we should do with uh, everything without damaging the place uh, to make the house. On uh, the um, neighbors' uh, houses and everywhere in the neighborhood, before they build, they always make a clearing, cutting trees to build the house on the, on the middle. But in this case, we uh, took uh, two important decisions. The first one was not to cut any tree, and the second was to raise up the house in order to, uh, uh, to keep the, the, the sand dune uh, as it is, uh, without damaging the, the slope, uh, and also to make sure that we catch uh, the best view. So we used uh, very small steel elements uh, to build the house, uh, and we built the structure ar around the, the houses uh, with uh, no scenography, uh, just uh, uh, the um, uh, minimum structure that would help to build a platform uh, for the house. So the house is uh, uh, elevated of uh, four meters uh, above. We did a very thin uh, foundation, like uh, needles, uh, we, uh, with no uh, um, relation between the foundations and all the stability of structure is made on the, the, the structure on top, but not in the, on the ground. So we could do it very, uh, very precisely without, uh, without changing uh, the ground. And the house is um, a very simple structure, simple materials, but from inside, uh, uh, the architecture disappears uh, just to let the place to uh, the landscape, to the, the trees, to the nature. Making do with the, uh, the existing is an opportunity to make a, a more sustainable master planning, another way of making the city. This was a project for a, a competition that uh, we were um, selected to do it on, uh, this, uh, on this place here with uh, uh, the, the white uh, line. Uh, and the project was to make housing and um, ecological um, housing neighborhood uh, on that place. Uh, this place was uh, a former beautiful forest that uh, you can see here. Uh, the, the rest of this forest, and uh, uh, this forest was, uh, um, with, uh, with the time, um, degraded by uh, the pressure of the construction, uh, but that was still remaining uh, an uh, interesting place uh, that we studied from the ground and not from, uh, from outside, just to uh, observe that it was a, a really wonderful uh, place. Uh, but still uh, regressing. Uh, and on that place, um, the, the brief requested to make uh, 300 uh, houses. So um, we rapidly, uh, so there were also this uh, old construction, totally abandoned, which was uh, a part of a former uh, university which was done there. So the um, quite, quite interesting building, but totally abandoned, and the city planned to demolish it. So we did a first check with, uh, on the site to just to 
uh, to see that we, uh, of course, intuitively uh, know uh, that 300 uh, houses on this plot would uh, totally kill what was remaining from the forest and make uh, uh, change radically the neighborhood while it was requested to, uh, to make, at the end, uh, an ecological uh, housing uh, neighborhood. So we propose not to make houses, but to work with the collective housing, uh, which were uh, disseminated on the site, and uh, to, to start uh, the construction, uh, much the first level, very high uh, from the ground, at uh, 12 meters from the ground, so that the forest uh, could, uh, could stay, uh, um, could stay uh, below the, 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 the buildings and uh, not only continue to, uh, to, to, to live, but also uh, to recover uh, better uh, conditions. And uh, we did with uh, um, a landscaper, but also uh, a scientist, a botanist, uh, a kind of uh, schedule of uh, recovery of the forest uh, from four years to 10 years. And uh, then after 40 years, uh, we could have uh, recovered uh, nearly the, the, the right forest. But uh, everything was uh, raised up, uh, no cars. The cars were let at the, at the limit, very close to the, to the street. And then uh, it was uh, uh, the, the inhabitants should go uh, to, the, to the blocks by walking or bike. And then they, uh, they, um, the forest and the ground was uh, let public. It means that the, name, the, the ownership uh, started at uh, 12 uh, meters high. And sometimes we found uh, stairs or elevators to join uh, this, uh, this um, um, hallway, this, uh, this uh, pathway, uh, which could join uh, every uh, stair, uh, staircase uh, to reach the, the dwellings. So that was uh, an interesting uh, project that allowed to keep the situation and, uh, uh, and also provide at the same time a wonderful housing uh, at uh, 12 meters high and also a new way of living with uh, um, moving uh, by, um, by walking or by bike with no cars uh, very close. And uh, on top of this, a wonderful uh, landscape. So we didn't uh, win the competition. Uh, and they did uh, the 300 houses, <laughs> uh, which is uh, really, uh, 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 with, at, at the end of uh, the label of ecological uh, neighborhood. Uh, so it fulfills all the requirements in terms of energy. Uh, but just to say that finally, uh, the normatives is not the best way to save uh, what's uh, the best that we have in, uh, in the hands. So it's important also to, uh, for us it's very important to re-question uh, a brief, not to accept everything when, just because it's written on a brief, but we, we like to make a, set, a step back and to understand why, uh, what is the question and should we reply in the way which is uh, expected. Make do with climate, for us um, this... Uh, the taking care to climate is, uh, is very important and it's not something new in our work because uh, since uh, the very beginning we were really involved in, uh, in, uh, in working in architecture which is really done for uh, taking the, uh, the, the benefit of the natural resource to save energy while providing a more pleasant uh, comfort and life. Uh, we learned a lot uh, as students, but also as young architects, from, uh, from the uh, agriculture, and uh, especially uh, greenhouses. Uh, we studied in Bordeaux, uh, and um, around the city, on very large fields, there were these uh, greenhouses where they grew uh, fruits, tomatoes, uh, flowers. And we were very interested in uh, this um, architecture, which are so light, but also so performant to deal with the climate uh, uh, using maximum uh, the, um, the sun rays uh, to heat the space, 
but with uh, a very large ventina ventilation, the possibility of, uh, of really uh, changing the climate uh, inside. And all these systems, uh, ventilation, uh, shedding, they are uh, part of the process of the greenhouse. And uh, because it's an uh, agricultural product, it's uh, uh, very, uh, very cheap, but uh, extremely efficient. And our first uh, house that we did in 1992, uh, was really inspired by, um, by uh, this uh, technology of uh, greenhouses, uh, transparency to capture the sun rays, uh, minimum material for the construction, uh, natural ventilation, simple shelving, uh, and all this allowed to manage uh, very e efficiently and naturally the, the good climate. So this house was uh, for uh, um, a family of uh, workers, so they had a very small budget at the time, something like uh, 55,000 euros. Uh, and they were about to buy a um, very basic house on the catalogue. Uh, but the house was not uh, fitting very well with the dimension of the, the, the plot. And uh, it turns that we were uh, put in contact. And uh, uh, as, as young architects, we are really involved. And, and really obsessed to, to do something which was much more better than uh, prefabricated the house. Uh, we were involved to, uh, to re-question uh, what is the housing is, and for us the first thing was uh, to give more, uh, more, more space. Um, normally, this family, with uh, their budget, they could, uh, they could buy a 65 to 70 square meters house. Uh, and uh, we were re strongly involved in doing twice more, because we, uh, we thought that uh, for a family living in 65, uh, 65 square meters is not uh, providing a good life. And from this time, we were really, really involved in, in that uh, idea of uh, providing more space. Uh, but of course, uh, for the same budget, uh, it was not uh, um, the, the, the issue of uh, the question of uh, increasing the budget. So we worked a lot with uh, industrial uh, products to look at uh, how uh, the cheap construction are made, but that we uh, re um, reused in a different way. And the second point was to work uh, with uh, also the, the climate, and uh, we did also this uh, big uh, greenhouse, uh, which is uh, joined to the, the basic uh, rooms, uh, and uh, um, very efficient in the energy. So um, from 1992 and this first house, uh, we worked very, very intuitively on the, this uh, issue of um, saving energy, uh, we had no tools at the time really to calculate, and uh, we used, uh, we worked with uh, the people of greenhouses to try to, uh, because uh, the, um, the basic engineers they didn't want to help us because they would, they, it was a an, an kind of unknown system. Uh, but we, um, the clients, the clients were very nice because they, they were really involved in uh, also this uh, issue, and they followed us, and uh, we developed this house. Uh, for the budget, and uh, which is also, um, and this is the most important uh, at the end, very pleasant to live. So this greenhouse is uh, um, 60 square meters, uh, while the, the basic rooms uh, offer 120 square meters. So at the end, 180 square meters, which was given for the use uh, of the family. So um, some, um, some time later, we did uh, on a kind of same principle, uh, collective social housing in the city of Mulhouse in the uh, north uh, east, uh, in east of France. And uh, this project was uh, following another project that we did in 2005, which was called Cité Manifeste, uh, which was uh, social housing, but with a client who uh, asked uh, to propose ideas how to redevelop a new kind of uh, housing at, uh, on the um, 21st century. And this, is, this one is uh, the second project in a more dense uh, situation uh, in part of the city. Uh, and we agreed with the client on the fact that um, we should propose much more than uh, the standard uh, dwellings 
uh, more space, more facility, more quality of life, while, of course, uh, keeping uh, working with uh, the budget because it's uh, public housing, so the subsidies come from the, the government. So in this case, we uh, propose to not to work with the uh, agricultural uh, system because we couldn't do it in, uh, in such dense construction. Uh, but we propose to work with uh, uh, very efficient uh, systems of uh, concrete systems uh, for the construction that allows to make uh, platforms, uh, large platforms of uh, something like uh, uh, nearly 20 meters deep uh, with a span of 10 meters so that uh, every dwelling has uh, 10 meters large uh, with no, uh, no uh, uh, impact of the structure inside the dwelling. So the flats, they are, um, they are due to orientation. They are all open onto uh, a kind of winter garden like uh, this one, equipped with all the systems uh, like uh, this, uh, these curtains, which are really part of the system of facade uh, for the winter uh, um, the, the winter comfort, but also the summer, the summer comfort. And in all these conditions, we provided uh, uh, flats which are twice bigger than uh, the, the, the standard for uh, the same, uh, the same uh, cost. As, uh, uh, so the principle of winter garden that we find in uh, most uh, of uh, our projects, include, including the, the public uh, projects like uh, uh, schools or uh, contemporary art center because it's, uh, it allows to work on uh, the principle of uh, double envelope. And the double envelope is uh, very interesting because it creates such an uh, intermediate space uh, which is not heated, uh, but uh, in between outside and inside it, provided, it provides uh, some um, s already some degrees, and especially in uh, in winter, which allows to eat less uh, inside uh, the dwelling. And in summer, it's a uh, it's a large uh, terrace. In this case, it's uh, it's uh, three meters and one meter balcony, uh, which uh, is in a way like uh, like a garden uh, for a house. So all the system of curtains, which come from the agriculture. But all these systems is a, a passive system. It means that it only uses uh, the natural resource of the sun, of ventilation. Uh, but it's, uh, it allows to, uh, to fulfill all the best requirement of uh, sa uh, saving energy without diminishing uh, the glass windows. Uh, and uh, without requiring to very sophisticated systems uh, of, uh, or, or special uh, technologies. But uh, uh, moreover, uh, what is interesting in such a space, and it's also the, our first goal, is how uh, to um, expand uh, the space for living. And in fact, this space is, uh, and we can see in, uh, in most of the case we did such, uh, uh, such greenhouses, uh, such winter garden for houses, uh, it's always um, the place uh, where uh, the inhabitants are the most creative uh, because it's not affected by any function. It's uh, really an extra space with no, uh, no function which is given to the inhabitants and they, uh, they deal very well with uh, this exchange between the inside uh, greenhouse and the outside. So it's uh, the place for, for freedom, uh, which is also given while it's uh, also uh, very efficient. Um, this efficiency with the double envelope, we all also worked uh, very early in, uh, for this uh, um, university building in uh, Grenoble, in the, the Alpen, uh, for uh, university for uh, arts and uh, human uh, sciences. Uh, that was built in 1995. 
And uh, here we use also this uh, principle of uh, double envelope and uh, uh, with uh, three methods in, uh, of um, uh, buffer zone, a winter garden in front of the facade of uh, all the, uh, the rooms, the classrooms. Here it's a library. And uh, in this case, it's a planted of uh, uh, Bougainville. Uh, that was also for uh, that was also for us a way to uh, uh, to escape from the mountains and uh, to establish uh, because here it's uh, there are very high mountains around because we are in the in the middle of uh, the Alpen uh, and that was also uh, coming from the flatland from uh, Bordeaux we were much impressed by these mountains and the forests uh, uh, flowers were a way to uh, uh, to to filter the view and uh, to propose an uh, an idea of uh, somewhere. So, but here again, uh, it was uh, uh, very efficient uh, in terms of um, using the uh, resource of the climate. Make do with abandoned buildings to reuse, re-give life to uh, invent uses. So it's uh, also in, uh, for us very interesting to work on existing buildings. And uh, the first thing is to observe carefully what we have uh, already have. So in this case, we were uh, invited for a competition uh, to uh, work on this um, industrial building, which was part of uh, a former um, large um, shipyard. The building is uh, the building is here, uh, and the shipyard has been uh, totally destroyed. Uh, 20 years ago, and uh, this building remained alone because it was especially uh, important in the memory of uh, the inhabitants of the city and the worker, workers. They call it the cathedral, and that was the place where uh, the, the final assemblage of the boats were, uh, was done before they went, they moved uh, to the sea. So in the mind, in the, in the common mind of the, the people, it was uh, an interesting, uh, important place. It's why uh, the city decided to, to keep it and to do inside um, an, um, a contemporary art center, which is a regional uh, collection. In France, we have uh, like this uh, 20, 25 uh, regional collection. It means that it's, uh, every region is... Uh, uh, every year since uh, 30, uh, 30 uh, years is, um, is, um, is buying artworks and it makes a public collection. Before it was just store somewhere uh, and uh, the artworks were just uh, landed to uh, schools, to museums, to but uh, now, due to the quality of the collections here and there, the, um, uh, the, the state decided to uh, make a second generation of this uh, regional collection and to allow them to make also exhibition to show uh, on the place their collections. So we were uh, involved in uh, the competition. And uh, the first day, uh, when we visited the, the, the space, uh, it was amazing because when they opened the door, uh, we saw this uh, amazing space, totally empty, with a lot of life, uh, in a very good state. Uh, and we were uh, really fascinated and um, very touched by the quality of this void. And uh, intuitively, uh, together with uh, Jean-Philippe, um, immediately we, we said um, we should uh, save the void. Uh, we should not... To, to, for us, it was intuitively a, a mistake to fill the space uh, with uh, floors every four meters, uh, to have to insulate uh, the space, to change all facades, because uh, the, the, the artwork storage needs special conditions to, uh, to conserve. So uh, air conditioning, uh, humidity, so that everything that could not be provided with uh, such a space without uh, important works. And uh, we left the place with this uh, first intuition that uh, probably uh, that would be a mistake to, to do that. So, but we did the exercise, uh, and uh, finally we proposed uh, to keep the void and to make a twin, to make the program not inside the existing, but in... Uh, uh, in a new building, which was exactly the twin, the same form, the same uh, footprint, the same dimension, just to say that 
No one has more value than the other. Uh, there is uh, not uh, any uh, competition between the two, but it, it just, they are just kindly um, juxtaposed on, on the place. So the, the existing is kept as a void with a very few works so that we can introduce a lot of uh, public inside. And the new one uh, fulfills all the requirements uh, for um, uh, for this uh, an art, uh, contemporary art center. It means uh, uh, good condition for conserving artworks, a large space for uh, exhibition. But this space has, um, has remained uh, empty. Uh, we just uh, re, uh, reinstalled um, uh, the bridge, um, the, um, the crane on the top, so that it can have a lot of uh, possibilities to, to deal with it. This space is uh, 35 meters high, 25 meters uh, large, and 75 meters long. So you can imagine this volume. And for us, uh, keeping the, this void was extremely important uh, as an extra space, which was already there and that we could give uh, to the art center. So the other part of the, the new part is, uh, is uh, filling uh, the, the brief with um, space for exhibition at different level. Uh, some are small, some are huge, so, so there is a range of uh, different space. Everywhere we have kept the natural light with uh, the, some systems to make the dark if uh, it's necessary. And also um, an important system of uh, movable walls that they can use uh, to change uh, the space and to rearrange in function of the different uh, exhibitions. And on the last level, because uh, here again we have the principle of the double envelope. Here this is um, a kind of uh, very efficient uh, box uh, of uh, four levels in which we have the very good conditions uh, for keeping the artworks and also the exhibitions uh, uh, rooms. Uh, but all around we have this double envelope which creates a good um, a good buffer zone, but at the same time, on, the, on this uh, last level, it, it offers a fantastic view on the landscape around the, the harbor, the sea, uh, and, and so on. Make do with uh, minimum material to build more space, more air, to give more places to use this, and to spend uh, better and less. So uh, using as minimum material is for us something very important and uh, we really take care in the design of projects uh, to use just what we need and not more because it's uh, always a benefit uh, for uh, the space for inhabiting. And uh, again, learning from uh, the greenhouses was very important because uh, the, um, uh, in the agriculture they, they are looking so much for maximum light, maximum sun, that they really develop um, um, a good design of structures uh, to uh, minimize uh, the, uh, the impact of the structure and the shadow made by the structure. So we learned a lot again from, uh, uh, from these um, greenhouses. And here uh, we did a project for uh, uh, social housing in uh, the city, uh, the same city as uh, the other one, but this one is City Manifest, is uh, the first one that we built in 2005. And here we used, uh, again, we uh, proposed to develop very large dwellings compared to the standard. And to do that, we used uh, uh, very efficient materials for construction. First, on ground floor, uh, we built a concrete platform with uh, minimum columns uh, and um, nearly no walls. And on top of this platform, we built three rows of uh, uh, prefabricated greenhouses. Uh, and uh, inside this big volume, we organized the uh, uh, 14 uh, dwellings. But the use of these uh, two elements coming from one from the industry, the second from the agriculture, uh, made a good combination, uh, very cheap construction that allowed to, uh, uh, to afford uh, more space uh, for the same budget. And then 
uh, we uh, had these two, uh, we proposed these two uh, kind of spaces, one on ground floor, um, um, below the, the concrete structure, and the other one below, uh, under the sky, uh, below this, um, uh, the greenhouses. And the goal was to uh, divide it in 14 uh, uh, houses, which pro provide to every house the two conditions on the ground floor and the first floor. So this is the result, um, uh, the, the final result. But also what is important in, uh, in using such materials and also the making the economy of materials allows to pay more space, to give more space. And uh, it's also um, important to say that uh, the discussion we had uh, in, the, in, the, in the project uh, at, during the studies with the client uh, was also uh, not just about the project, but what uh, will happen with the rents uh, after the, the completion, because if we build larger, uh, they, should not, uh, they should not rent it in function of the surface, uh, due uh, to the fact that we will not spend more than the standard. And the discussion was very successful, because the client agreed our, um, our approach, and uh, he said, you are right, uh, if we don't spend more for the construction, there is no reason uh, to increase the rent. So uh, this, uh, these people now, they have uh, these uh, very huge apartments for the same rent, as a very standard uh, housing. And also, they, uh, due to the, the greenhouses and this uh, double envelope, they, they don't spend a lot of energy for, uh, for heating. Um, this, uh, this care to the use of material was also an, uh, um, an issue, a, a concern for us in, uh, in building the School of Architecture in the city of Nantes. Uh, here again, um, we, we propose uh, exactly as uh, for house, we consider that the program which was given of 9,000 uh, square meters for 1,000 uh, students was already too small uh, because the program is always uh, the compromise between discussions, negotiations, uh, an idea of the cost of the construction. And for us, uh, uh, we saw that uh, if we think that for a house we need as much extra space as program space, there is no reason not to think the same for any public building. So for the School of Architecture, that was also our proposal to, uh, to, to give as much unprogrammed space as, uh, uh, as program space. So at the end, uh, built uh, 18,000 square meters. So we used also, uh, uh, we, we asked to calculate uh, the structure, to use prefabricated structure so that it could uh, be done uh, really at the minimum material that we needed. And uh, we proposed to build a kind of uh, infrastructure with uh, the floors at uh, different uh, levels. The first one was nine meters and the two others at uh, seven meters. So um, it was possible after, afterwards to rebuild inside with lighter uh, floors, lighter construction uh, to put the School of Architecture. Uh, here we see that in, uh, in green, that's the program. And in blue, this is uh, the, three, the free space, extra space, uh, which can be appropriated by, by the students always in connection uh, with uh, the program, uh, program space. So, but uh, what is also interest, interesting in this uh, sketch is to see that uh, on the left we have the, 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 the we calculated the, the, the cubic uh, met meters of the total uh, volume, so which something like one uh, one um, one hundred um, near uh, one hundred nine. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, one hundred thousand. Sorry, cubic meters. Uh, but uh, the, the material used for the construction, it means that what is not the air, what is not the space, is in uh, dark gray, and it is uh, uh, something like 8% of the built volume. So the, the compactness of the construction, the use of minimum material, allows to give uh, more space uh, for the uses, and it also allows to uh, provide with uh, this uh, extra space that 
uh, for us is so important uh, in the life of the building and for the appropriation. The for us, this space is an extra space, is uh, used for building models, nine meters on the ceiling in connection with the street, with very simple materials to close, so they can enter with, um, with bikes, but also with trucks to deliver the materials. Uh, while here we have the, the, the connection between the uh, inside the studio of project, which are part of the program, which uh, um, fulfills uh, the, the conditions of uh, eating, uh, acoustic insulation, and so on. While uh, on the other side of the, the, um, the glass window, we have the extra space, uh, which can be uh, used for, uh, for the studio, but for any other event, or to remain empty just to, to stay here. So this space, this extra space, allows uh, a lot of different uses. Um, and the school is, uh, is full of uh, uh, groups or associations of students which propose all along the year different events, like here it's kind of dance, or uh, even the, the roof of the school uh, is uh, also um, a place for, uh, for events, because we gave to every floor a capacity of one tone per square meter, so it's possible to rebuild or to make uh, special events, like here, the one of the last summer, uh, outdoor cinema, which stayed uh, all, which um, lasted all the summer uh, in this place. Making do is uh, really observing what we have in hands. In this project in Bordeaux in 1996, we were asked to, uh, to make um, a project for uh, an embellishment uh, of the square. So uh, uh, we observed this place. We had four months to and the budget to make the um, to, to make the works, uh, and uh, we observed the place. We moved there um, many times during the three four months, uh, and uh, we observed all the qualities. And uh, finally, uh, uh, when uh, we had to deliver the project, we went back to the uh, to the city and to the the, the, com the the jury, the jury, and uh, we said um, at the question uh, to embellish this square, our uh, reply is the square is already beautiful, and we gave all the uh, uh, arguments of our observation, and uh, we say our project for uh, the embellishment is uh, to do nothing. And the last, uh, one of the last parts is make do uh, with the housing blocks uh, to transform, reuse, upgrade, to extend life, to reinvent, to give more with less. It's uh, an important part of um, our work today, following a research that we did some, uh, some um, years ago. And uh, we specially studied uh, this, um, the modern uh, large housing developments, massively built uh, in the suburbs in the 60s and 70s. And uh, it's interesting to, like for this one, for example, which is very typical of, the, uh, of this uh, neighborhood of the 60s. And it's interesting to, uh, to, to remind that uh, at the time, in the 60s, 70s, all these uh, neighborhoods, these housing uh, uh, neighborhoods, uh, they carried a vision of the future, which was uh, optimistic. Uh, and uh, a modern way of living, affordable to everyone. And some famous uh, movies of the new wave celebrated uh, this new vision of the city and the society, like here in, uh, in 1987, a film um, from uh, Jean-Luc Godard with uh, Marina Vladi, which is uh, two or three uh, things I know about her, and which is a... Uh, uh, totally shooted in uh, in um, in uh, these uh, housing blocks in uh, in the suburbs, uh, but these places uh, today they no longer represent a model for living in many cities. And uh, after the uh, utopia of the 60s, now it's um, the, the disenchantment, and these places today are mostly neglected or rejected. And, um, however, the issue of uh, their future is, uh, is, is um, a big issue in, uh, in uh, many cities. 
In France, for example, a national program for urban renovation was uh, launched in uh, around 2005, and uh, it was based, like here, on the demolition and uh, rebuild of uh, al almost 200,000 uh, flats. So at the time, um, and uh, we started to see uh, from that time all these uh, pictures, uh, sometimes on the, on the TV, like a show organized uh, uh, to, to see the demolition of uh, these uh, buildings. And at the time, together with uh, Frédéric Druot, um, a good friend architect, we did the research, uh, which was, which was um, an idea of uh, resisting to this uh, uh, principle of demolition and uh, uh, to, uh, to, to, to see if uh, something else was uh, possible, more positive, more, uh, more, uh, um, more kind for people, more uh, intelligent, less economic. Uh, and uh, we produce uh, this, uh, this research that we name uh, PLUS. And uh, at the beginning of uh, this uh, research, we, um, uh, our statement was um, very clear, facing the, um, the kind of uh, violence of the demolition. It, was, uh, uh, it is a matter of uh, never demolishing, subtracting or replacing things, but always adding, transforming and utilizing them. And uh, it was, uh, we, we really studied very carefully some um, examples from uh, this uh, national strategy of renovation. And uh, ju just a very few numbers, just to, to show, to compare that uh, the, national, uh, um, the national program of uh, demolition and rebuild at the cost of 165,000 euros uh, per dwelling. Uh, from uh, 2006 until 2015, uh, the, the, the government demolished 125,000 dwellings and rebuilt 100,000. So it means that for now there is a loss of 25,000. And in the uh, alternative plus that we studied, uh, we, uh, we worked with no demolition but just on project on transformation. And from the examples that we studied, we studied the number of examples very carefully in detail, uh, with uh, also the, the cost estimation of the projects, and uh, we arrived to um, an average of 55,000 uh, euros per dwelling. So, and uh, that was our um, idea, our intention, our attitude in doing this research, and uh, we had later the opportunity of uh, doing uh, very few projects. Uh, but the, the idea was uh, to start from the existing, uh, to consider that an existing has uh, always qualities, and the matter is to find them, to look at them carefully. And starting from these qualities, uh, it was um, starting from the inside, the quality of housing, uh, just uh, through some very simple operations, uh, uh, it was possible to change radically uh, the quality of this uh, housing and to uh, provide from the existing better uh, housing conditions. So when we arrived to this uh, idea that um, in the transformation, as well as for the new housing, a dwelling should have the same facility as a villa. So that means that it's a kind of pleasure, a kind of comfort that is much more than the basic uh, dwelling with just uh, four walls and the small windows, but the, the possibility of uh, moving or giving the feeling that uh, everyone uh, uh, like in a uh, in house. So transformation, openness, extension, more space, more light, more freedom of use. So this project in uh, Bordeaux is the one who uh, won recently the Miss Van der Rohe Award. So it's a um, huge block that was uh, built. It's a city which was built in, um, in Bordeaux in the 60s, 70s. At the time, it was a little bit a, a part of the city center. But today, because the city has grown, it's uh, totally inside the city with a lot of equipment, a good quality of life. Uh, it also it has been integrated in the UNESCO heritage uh, perimeter recently. So it means that uh, in the city now it's, um, it's much integrated than 
at the beginning. But, uh, however, on, um, that's uh, an amount of 4,000 dwellings, and the blocks we have to work with uh, were these uh, three blocks with uh, the orange um, colors. Uh, but, um, however, the city studied uh, the demolition of these uh, three buildings. They represent 530 dwellings. Um, but um, the only reason that really stops the process is that they didn't know how to, um, to, to find quite fast uh, 530 new dwellings to relocate the inhabitants. And then came um, a new director for the social housing company of the city, uh, which really involved in, uh, in, uh, in no demolition and uh, who arrived uh, to convince the city not to demolish and uh, uh, to start um, um, a process of uh, transformation. So this is a block uh, as we could see it uh, before the transformation. And um, it's very important not to consider uh, this um, these um, buildings from, from outside, because from outside, um, everyone could think that it's um, ugly, that, it's, um, that it has no interest, and uh, uh, staying on outside uh, only uh, leads to say at the end it should be demolished and replaced by something. But the good thing and the good approach is to go inside. And from inside, it's a totally different approach, a totally different feeling. Um, it's, uh, the, um, um, it's a possibility of uh, visiting uh, all these uh, different atmospheres. Uh, 530 families who, who um, nearly all uh, gave an, uh, an extra value uh, to the dwellings uh, from the inside. And, uh, after the visit, it's, n it's not possible anymore to, uh, to see the building as a block, but uh, only uh, as um, a big amount of uh, very nice uh, interior situation. So the project uh, of transformation starts from the inside. Consider what is positive and good that we should absolutely keep, including people, including uh, uh, what they have done inside, and uh, consider what we should add to transform it and to uh, update and to bring this building for a new life um, for a very, uh, for much longer time. So we propose to do this project in this way, and we propose to make the transformation without uh, removing any inhabitant. So in doing the, the works of transformation while every family could stay inside. So we studied the special uh, process of uh, uh, transformation. Uh, most of the dwellings inside didn't need so much. Uh, we just uh, changed uh, all the electricity, the bathrooms. Uh, but in general, the people were um, really attached to keep their interior. So the project proposed to uh, from this uh, existing here, you can see just a little part of the, uh, the very long uh, blocks. Uh, and we propose to make an addition of four meters on the south facade uh, that could benefit to uh, all dwellings because most of the dwellings, they have two orientation and or one orientation on south. So we, uh, we were sure that doing this, all the dwellings should have uh, a kind of equal um, extra quality with uh, these winter gardens. Uh, and then to, uh, um, to give uh, um, a large access uh, from the interior to the winter garden. So it means that um, there was a process of opening all uh, windows to transform all windows into large uh, gla glass doors so that, uh, like in a house, there could be a mobility between the rooms and the uh, winter gardens uh, any time and uh, uh, to uh, propose um, something better for, uh, for the, the quality of the house. And the process of uh, transformation was studied very early in, uh, in the process so that we could make sure that the proposal was possible, uh, the construction was possible while uh, the families stay uh, inside. 
So for uh, most of uh, dwellings like this one, uh, the extension represents nearly the same uh, number of square meters than the uh, existing dwelling. Uh, the, the discussion also, we presented the project with, to the inhabitants through a number of, uh, of meetings. Uh, so everyone was uh, aware of the project. Uh, the owner also had a number of people who were uh, every day discussing with people to explain, uh, to explain the project and uh, uh, so that we, we could do it in a quite, uh, in a quite good uh, way. And then we started the process of uh, construction. The discussion again between um, the um, association of inhabitants and the owner um, decided that there will be no increase of the rent because it, it was considered as a normal uh, uh, upgrade of uh, the, dwell the dwellings that the owner should uh, do. So here first, uh, this is a process of uh, uh, extensions, which was done by outside, and the final uh, transformation, which is given by uh, this extension. So the process of extension is not disturbing from, uh, for the inhabitants, because everything is done by outside. So everything is come, come uh, prefabricated, and just from the track uh, to, the, um, to, to the building. So it's just uh, fixed to the, uh, to the existing structure, but it's uh, as, uh, the, the new structure has its own support. And step by step, the process of construction is going on. And then we, start, we started the process of opening the doors. Uh, and the commitment was to, to replace, uh, to open the windows and to replace by new glass windows in uh, maximum two days. So the first day, the first day the opening, the second is uh, the new sliding door. And a few days uh, later, uh, the inhabitants can, uh, can use it even if we keep some finishes to do uh, at the threshold between the existing and uh, the new. So the process, uh, so we put this um, temporary partition for, uh, against uh, the dust. So this is the first day, so uh, it's possible to, to stay and continue living inside. The second day, the glass window, and then it's, um, there is just the finishes to, to do. And the pro from this uh, approach, the process of transformation is, uh, is, um, is very strong with this new space, which is given an extra space, which is given to the inhabitants. It's not heated. It's like a semi-outside uh, uh, semi uh, garden. And immediately there is... Uh, the appropriation by the inhabitants, and it's not necessary to give any rules, any, uh, any suggestion, because uh, the creativity of inhabitants has no limit. But it's very important to be confident in uh, this uh, creativity and to be confident in, uh, in people in uh, doing such projects. So making do with uh, the existing, um, it's, it's very clear that the existing has a high potential uh, for um, redeveloping, for uh, increasing quality, uh, for doing it with uh, less money, uh, for uh, taking care to the uh, energy, grey energy, energy uh, for, for heating, for, uh, but also um, all the... Uh, all economy we can do that gives this quality of housing to uh, everyone, that makes it affordable for everyone. And we have a, a great uh, trust in uh, this way of doing that also um, allows to transform radically uh, just because we first, uh, we, um, we give a positive high uh, to, um, to this um, existing. So uh, we added some, uh, also we use also the capacity of the, root, the roofs, the flat roofs, to, uh, to add 
um, 10 uh, additional uh, houses, which are made with very simple and light structures, and very nice space because they play with uh, the chimneys, uh, but with a wonderful uh, location and a wonderful uh, uh, view on, uh, on the city. So, um, very fast, but it's interesting to see that uh, here it's public housing. Uh, so, s we could see that what is, uh, what is um, possible for public housing could not be possible for uh, every private uh, ownership. But uh, in this project, it's interesting to see that um, the participation of uh, the, the public is very small. It's, uh, only 20% public subsidies, and it was 80% uh, of the project was uh, funded by the social housing company uh, through uh, um, mortgage. Um, a few, uh, a few data: 100% of the existing has been conserved, uh, plus 53% of surface has been added an average of 50 square meters per dwelling of uh, usable uh, surface. Uh, the primary energy consumption just by this uh, addition uh, of uh, winter gardens uh, and also some renovation of the heating um, leads to um, saving of, uh, to diminishing uh, minus 60% of the energy. 100% uh, of the building has been uh, occupied during the work. Uh, the construction works, uh, no increase of the rent and, uh, and charge, uh, and the cost of this transformation is around 50,000 uh, euros net, net per dwelling, while um, the estimation of demolition and rebuild uh, by the city was 160,000 uh, euros. So um, we have a big trust in, uh, in the reuse of this existing and uh, uh, because in, uh, in the city there are so many situations uh, of existing uh, buildings, of existing uh, places that could be uh, renovated, but also uh, densified. Uh, and um, uh, it's, um, if we take care to uh, every situation, and uh, um, it's, it's a strategy of uh, case by case, which is relevant in this case, and not a general strategy of uh, uh, densification, renovation. Uh, this project they requires to change the attitude, uh, but there is a high potential of developing the city and to increase the quality of living in the cities in, uh, in doing this. So every building, every uh, dwelling can be transformed. Every plot can be increased for a sustainable and qualitative densification for the benefit of living spaces, uses and uh, inhabitants. So for us, making do is... Uh, is uh, a kind of, um, it's not a frustration as an architect to working with an existing, but at the opposite, uh, we, we really think that there is uh, an important uh, potential for creativity and for uh, invention, as well as for uh, economy that goes together because uh, the economy allows also uh, to do more with what we uh, already have. Thank you very much.